Hi there everyone. So we're starting off our series of Thursday tips. Um, to start off with, I just want to say that's exactly what they are. They're tips. They're tips on how to manage your dog's behavior better. Um, and that's it. We're not going to go into lengthy details on behavior modification. Um, if things are that serious or if things are that challenging for you, you need to seek, um, go to your local training school, um, a qualified trainer or a behaviorist, depending on the issues that you're having with your dog and how severe it is. It's not going to change itself. It's, they're not going to grow out of it. Dogs tend, <laughs> tend to grow into things rather than grow out of it. They get better at the behavior that they're doing. So um, we got loads of topics um, requests from people on different things that they'd like some tips on. I'm not going to start this first Thursday with answering any of them. Instead, I'm going to go through some pointers that I think, once you understand, is going to help with um, your overall um, behaviour of your dog. And a lot of the questions that people have sent in are will be answered in this. So you'll always hear week by week. You'll hear me referring back to these um, to these points. So first thing, I wrote down a couple of things from all your requests. There was loads of ones that was starting with, how do I stop my dog? How do I stop my dog? How do I stop my dog? Um, I hate starting things like that. Instead, rethink the way you were um, thinking, I guess is the word. Um, instead of saying, how do I stop my dog? Think about it. I don't like that my dog's doing this behavior. What would I like him to do instead? And then let's train that behavior. So that's the first point. You need to teach your dogs um, what you want them to do and what you expect of them. Don't just wait, they're behaving all the time, give me tons of behaviors. Don't just wait until they do something that you don't like and focus on how to change that. You want to give them all these things that you want of them um, and be really, really consistent with that. Otherwise, your, your dogs won't understand um, what's going on and you'll see their behavior be up and down um, constantly. And we don't want to fall into that trap of Rover no, rover off, rover this. It's just gonna frustrate you and frustrate your dog. And um, your dog's gonna be confused. They're not gonna, a lot of the times when we speak to our dogs like that all the time, they don't not fully trust us. They tend to kind of ignore us because they don't know what we want. So they just get a little bit nervous. They look like they're paying attention and then they completely just zone you out. Um, so you really wanna set them up to succeed and not to fail. Um, and it should be like, unless you're very skilled yourself and have gone down the route of making yourself knowledgeable on how to train your dog or teach, that's all it is, is teaching. We, we, when we're talking about children, we say teach. When we're talking about animals, we say train. It makes it a little bit more robotic, but that's all it is. You're just teaching your dog just like you teach your kids. Um, so second point I want to say is keep your expectations realistic. Oh, sometimes we just put too high of an expectations on our dogs. Remember, that's what they are, the dogs. Um, so be really realistic and what would we like them to do? Dogs like and need different things than we do. Um, so unless you like chewing and digging and running and rolling and smelly stuff in the bark, um, that's what your dog enjoys to do. So if we don't want them to do this and chew our furniture and chew all these other things, we need to find outlets for that behavior so they can perform them and feel fulfilled in different ways. Um, so yeah, expectations, keep them realistic. Um, okay, big one is management of the environment. So you need to set up the environment so your dog cannot fail. Now I'm not gonna go into huge examples here on um, different behaviors because a lot of people have asked how do I stop how do I stop and a simple question is management of management of the environment everybody wants a magic wand to train and they don't want to put much work in um, but they want results and I kind of feel like we do that at all we, look we all we're all guilty of it um, think of weight loss as an example everybody knows if you want to lose weight everybody knows you basically you eat less you move more um, but then companies are still making tons of money on 
on weight loss tablets or weight loss drinks. So just be mindful of it. If you if you if you really are looking for your dog's behavior to change, you, you gotta put some work in. And the magic wand, the nearest thing to a magic wand to train is is, is setting up the environment so the dog can't fail. Um and another one on that point is you don't want a dog to rehearse the behavior. The more a dog rehearses the behavior, the better they get at it. Um, so if there's anything that your dog is doing at the minute that you're like, I don't like it. If you, if you actually went to the effort of responding um, and sending me a message, your dog's obviously really good at it um, because you've been letting him rehearse it, rehearse it, rehearse it, and it's just turned into a habit. Um, and it's self-rewarding now. You know, it has nothing to do with you, but it's, it's self-rewarding. So make sure if they're doing something you don't like them to do, don't give them the opportunity to do that. I'll give you a simple example of that is, really basic one, how do I stop my dog begging at the table? If you don't want to put any work in, and you don't want to actually actively train your dog in alternative behavior, like go to bed in the corner of the room and stay there, then the magic wand to Training um, that behavior is give him a Kong, put him in his crate when you're eating your dinner, or give him a Kong, put him out the back, and um, close the door, and um, just separate him so he can't actually practice that behavior of being at the table under your feet waiting for some food to um, to to drop at your feet. Um, so he's getting to rehearse that behavior, so he's like, ah, this works. I'll hang out down here somewhere, and food will eventually drop. Um, that's the only example I'm going to give on that because I, there's been lots of um, queries around around little things like that. Um, and then the last point I want to make is set them up for success. So don't put your dog in situations that you know that you're going to fail. So if your problem is, another example, if your problem is jumping on lots of people, if your dog has, when he's out walking, he jumps on all these type of people, you're not going to take him down to the local festival in St. Anne's and to the Rose, the Rose Festival. What it was called? Anyway, um, where there's tons of people, tons of kids, really aroused the situation, and then expect him not to jump on people. If you know that that's an issue that you're having, that's still going to happen, and it's probably going to happen more in a situation like that. So don't put your dog in situations that you feel like um, they're going to fail. Um, and then with regards to with regards to being at home, like young dogs, they need to chew. They need to chew on things, they like digging, all those really, really um, natural behaviours for dogs to do. So if you're just going to leave the room full of nothing for the dog to do, no chew toys, um, food stuffed chew toys like Kongs, when your dog needs to chew, they will go to those things and that's what they will chew on, especially if there's food related to them. They'll spend time doing and um, working on them and kind of managing their own arousal levels, being really, really relaxed. But if you're not giving them suitable things to do, they're just going to be chewing on the legs of your table, chewing on the, the shoes that you left lying around. Again, that falls into management on the environment as well. If there's shoes or runners left on the floor or kids' toys left on the floor that you don't want the young dog to, to um, chew, you got to pick them up. Anything that's in a dog's reach, they're going, to, um, they're going to chew. So in that way, you're setting them up for failure rather than setting them up for success. Um, so make sure you're giving them the opportunities to do those behaviours um, until they, uh, unless they're going to go to your own, the own human stuff. Um, yes, okay. So those four points, that's it. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that for this week. So you need to teach them. So you need to get actively trained them. You need to manage your expectations. You need to manage the environment. And you need to set them up for success. Um, okay. Great, well, I'll talk to you next Thursday and we'll start answering um, the questions. The, the videos aren't going to be um, long. I'm not going to be sitting here talking um, for ages. I'll see how many issues I can get through, but I don't want any of the, the videos to really go over um, five minutes because I have a tendency to, to, to ramble on. Um, okay, see you next Thursday.